everybody and welcome to the marvel car collectors podcast your weekly digest of hobby goodness uh this week we have jason hello we have keith on the road your hands. Don't, oh. no, don't do that please don't do that <laughs> uh for those on audio sorry uh we have wesley um, hey and all i'm gonna say is what time is it kids it's upper deck time that's my favorite time on the podcast um so joining us this week we have tj welcome What's up, guys back. and we have his boss basically grant how you doing, guys? <laughs> I, I I can't imagine TJ. Before we get into what we're going to talk about this week, what's Grant like as a boss? Um, there are a lot of things that Grant and I share the same brain on when it comes to comic books, and I uh -huh. love that because sometimes I kind of feel like talking comics with a lot of people around here is like speaking Greek, and Grant's one of the only ones around here who gets it. Yeah. And I love that. Uh -huh. And then I realize as well that Grant works on like a higher brain function than the rest of the planet does. So <laughs> watching that is always a lot of fun for me. <laughs> I didn't mean to embarrass you there, Grant. I Checks honestly don't worry. All I have to do is politically correct answer. <laughs> all I have to do is simply go home to deflate any egos uh, that I may have. And <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so, uh, Grant, I'm aware we've only got you for a short window today. So, thank you for making time in your Friday. Um, for sure. We're, we're going to talk about Marvel Platinum today because, um, as uh, in fact, as we record it's due out uh this coming wednesday but this episode we're going to drop we're actually going to drop it on the wednesday so it coincides with the day release so basically you can spoil as much as you want because the set will be in the public domain when this episode drops so yep tell us all the secrets grant <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> we need to know where the bodies are buried um let, let's let's see so marvel platinum We've we've we talked about it before briefly last time you were on the podcast, and since then, very recently, the checklist has come out, and I think we're all a little bit giddy from from the the size of the checklist. So, um, but we can see uh, who all the artists are. We can see who all the characters are. Black Cat's in there again. Thank you for that. Uh, Wesley, by the way, another Black Cat collector, so he's sharing the same pain as me on this one. Um, yeah, number two. But let's talk about Marvel Platinum. So can you tell me, where, where did this set come from in your brain? Where was it kind of spawned from? I imagine it's been a long time in the in the works. It has, really. We've been working on this set for, I would say, over three years of development. That's how long it's taken to get to uh, essentially, you know, release date. Um, so it's pretty exciting for us after this very long path. This was not something we just whipped together and snapped our fingers and 10 minutes later, like, hey, let's just do this. We thought about it a long time. We developed it a long time. We, you know, we got the art in motion. Um, it, it's been a long time coming. It is a prominent product in our, our release calendar. Um, this and Marvel Masterpieces, I would consider our two tentpole releases for Marvel Publishing for the 2024 calendar year. That's how prominent this product is. This is not a subtle product. This is not a small product. Um, you, you know, this is, it, it's a it's a big product. We're excited about it. it. It is intimidating. It is like wrestling an octopus in some senses. Um, and I'm sure we can get into a lot of the discussions of uh, the likes and dislikes uh, that people are reacting to on the checklist or the content itself. But uh, I, I welcome that. You know, we're, we're never going to, please all the people all the time but hopefully we're going to please a lot of the people a lot of the time well i have to say the first thing i will say on that apart from the fact that i'm going to have to come back to the fact that you've just mentioned that a master Mas marvel masterpieces set will be released in 2024 so thank you for well, that. that's that's the hope that's the hope <laughs> good 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 bugger um i so <laughs> want to go down that road but i'll need to stay on the road that i'm on so um i so far I, all i can say is the original art is just blowing people's minds on this set so. yeah and um ian you and i uh had a chance to look at a good deal of the original art many mm. months ago i can't remember exactly when we did it but let's say six months ago or October. so yeah about six months yeah. yeah and i you know i was bursting at the seams to share the excitement we had internally 
seeing this art because, um, you know, the art is on the level of, dare I say, on the level of masterpieces because we have artists that have worked on masterpieces like Dave Palumbo and Simone Bianchi are doing art in this product. Um, and, <clears throat> you, you know, it, it's, we wanted to show how, what the best we could do to the best of our abilities in this product. We really tried to do that. Um, and many a times in life, we all try and, and put stuff together and, and sometimes it comes out good. Sometimes it comes out not so good. Things are never perfect in life, never will be. Um, but boy, for what we tried to achieve with this set, man, we came real close to that bullseye. You know, we came very close. We, we, and that is not, it doesn't happen all the time. It's like when we see the finished product and we have some of the finished product here, I've got cards, oh. you know, wow. here that we'll get into in a little bit. Um, when we saw that stuff, uh, we got them a few days ago. and It's sort of like you walk around high-fiving people because it worked, you know, now, as I stated, I, I get it that this can be a polarizing product to some people that I think a lot of people are hopefully going to enjoy some elements of the product. And I get it that some people will ha have stress and strain over some of the other elements of the product. But what we tried to do with this, with Chromium, original art, um, and, and taking all the best aspects of what is Chromium, which is, oh, by the way, Chromium is really good for what? Mm, kind of good for parallels. Um, you know, why are you using Chromium if you're not going to go parallel heavy on it? That's mm. what Chromium's best for. Um, I, I think we achieved our creative goals uh, and also our uh, goals of creating a vibrant box break and case break. This is going to be an amazingly fun product for breaking boxes. And even at the pack level, we thought about every layer and every level mm. and that big sprawling checklist that everybody's sweating bullets over there's a reason and there's a benefit for it in that the box breaks are going to be incredibly fun. There's a lot of hits in this product. You're going to get hits all over the place. So there's a push and pull. You can simplify the checklist and have what you might argue to be a relatively barren box break. And yes, that could create more value on the hits you get. But my goal was to try and deliver a vibrant box break where every pack had a chance of something mm -hmm. amazing in it. So, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, elements battling each other that you've got to make some concessions one area uh, to have success in another area. Yeah, and yeah. The nature to us of chromium is chromium's great when you show it in a, a lot of different substrates and colors. Yeah. And is that is that very much coming from the, the where it normally lives, you know, from the sports side? Yeah, because that's what you know chromium products tend to do is that for sure we don't do a lot of chromium products look at upper deck we even on our sports side on our hockey side let's say there are very few chromium products we do we do yeah. two of them out of some two dozen you know other pro other companies rely a lot more on chromium and, and that's fine they do what they do and chromium is a beautiful substrate it's part of what we do um and it, it was long time coming uh, for Marvel Publishing. It's it's mm. been since 2015 that we had a Marvel Publishing Chromium product with Vibranium. Yeah. And though that product certainly had its merits, um, it didn't, to me, satisfy what I wanted to produce uh, and show consumers with what we could do with a pro Chromium product. So mm. it only took us nine years to kind of come back to it <laughs> uh, and hopefully show you... Um, what we really can do with the Chromium product and with original art, uh, you know, when we really take our time and, and, and really put a lot of, we, we put a lot of emphasis on everything, but this one was a big product with a lot of work, yeah. took three years yeah. to build. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully that effort uh, shows through in the finished product for consumers. I mean, you've just, you almost had the opening act with the lure, which I know isn't publishing, but that's kind of sure. wet, the, wet the appetite a little bit and given people yeah. a sense of what to expect. I guess. And that was a very planned um, sort of delivery that we, and I've, I've spoken to this in the past, Ian, there's nothing new, uh, that we kind of consider that there's two different silos of content that we produce under the Marvel license. One is what we call publishing, which is based in comic books and comic book art. And the other is sort of live action, cinematic or streaming. And Allure is our Chromium live action cinematic or streaming. And we're not going to make an Allure publishing product now. Uh, just as similar, we're not going to make a platinum live action product. 
Black Diamond is a cinematic streaming product. Allure is a cinematic streaming, whereas Platinum are masterpieces. We kind of separate them. Fleur Ultra is a, is a publishing brand. Um, so there, there's a separate of uh, church and state, I guess you could say, yeah. with how we brand these things. So yes, there's Allure, a Chromium brand for cinematic live action, Platinum, a Chromium brand for publishing. Good. Okay. It, I mean, it's a, it's it must be a pretty sizable print run compared to some of the other well we don't speak about print runs i know you don't i know you choose not to talk about print runs. we, we don't but it, <laughs> no. clearly when people look at the size of the checklist but it's it's, um, gonna be big. it's not going to be some modest little product that we hope sneaks by unnoticed you know yeah. it, it's a yeah. big deal to us mm. um you know just as you know if marvel has bigger films like endgame or in, in infinity yeah. war those are there are different sized films and this is one of our bigger products or one of our more important products uh, and sure, yes, it has a large sprawling checklist. Again, that was in part, hopefully when people start breaking boxes on release date to today, it would be the, the day people will see this or hear this, um, that it's a vibrant and fun experience. Mm, exciting. So, um, so we got cards one to 100 of the original art and they group by Correct. artist. So we can see that yep. from the, from the artist signatures on the checklist. And then we've got the, um, the published art. I think it's how, you, how what do you call it the published art uh we call it library art that's library more of an internal there we, there we go term um tj you you pull that art all the time what do you call it i just i, I always say uh comic art honestly okay. i i keep it simple good okay. so it, but it, it is art derived and pulled from prior sure. published mm -hmm. comic books sure okay. yeah so uh, can I speak to that 200 card set for a second? Yeah, please. Because I believe there's been some concerns as to pe people saying, why didn't you just cut it off at 100 cards and just do, just give me, ex you know, the, the original art and that's it. But again, we worked on this for three years. We wanted to do a little more than that. We felt that there's merit in the original art and there's merit in the library art. Mm -hmm. And the cool part about the library art is, A, some of that art is incredibly historic and, and and has unbelievable nostalgic powers for all of us. We can all think back, whether it was the 70s, 80s, 90s, or 2000s, whatever era, you know, hits us in the feelies. Um, that, that art, using that art and transferring it into trading cards is a really cool thing. Um, furthermore, it allowed us to deliver a platform for creator uh, autographs. And we've got amazing autographs from Sienkiewicz and um, uh, Jim Starlin and Mark Wolfman and Jim Shooter and Roy Thomas and, and a ton of um, newer artists as well, but great creators of great merit. Um, and it allowed us to do that with sticker autographs and then also do another array of autographs with on-card autographs of cards one through 100 painted by Palumbo and and Tom Taggart and, oh, by the way, Bill Sienkiewicz and Mike Allred did cards in the base set and Ron Lim did cards in the base set. Yes, there will be hard sign cards of those guys. That's awesome. Like me as a collector, I'm like, yes, please, I'll take it all, you yeah. know? And, and all of it's a lot. I get it. But you know what? Collect what you like. Hopefully there's a lot of cool stuff for people to consider on this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, we, we, we haven't seen all of the art yet um, in terms of the – the uh, comic art, as TJ um, called it, um, we did see when we looked through it on the podcast um, last week. As people hear this, we um, in the preview images, Alex Maleev's Spider Woman, for example. Now, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that always deserves you know Alex Maleev artwork in a set is always a good time from my point of view because um, he's just astonishing um, and I love it. So, and I think I think if I looked on the checklist correctly, I think Bendis is signing that one because I think that's the one. That yeah. Him. I went with that specifically because um, nobody has done anything with Spider Woman since you know Marv Wolfman and all that stuff the way Brian Michael Bendis has, mm. and that Alex Maleev cover is kind of a turning point in New Avengers for her because it's is she Shield is she Hydra is she mm. Shield what is she? So mm. it was fun to choose that one. Yeah, it's it's so good. Um, so obviously, yeah, we won't see we won't see the rest of it until we see some of the breaks or indeed open our own products. But but Grant, it did is that true? Uh, I do have some cards <laughs> that I can share. <laughs> there we go. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna In make fact, it big I on mean, the screen. nobody's really seen. People have <laughs> seen the original the art. There we go. But so people have seen the original art. They've never seen it in trading cards. But as you as you noted, Ian, nobody's seen cards 101 through 200. Some of the library art and um, an element of this product. Let me see if I can 
show you. I have to now, while you're getting that, did you guys actually get yeah. the experience of opening a box, or do you just get some random cards? No, not yet. We've oh. got. Um, we did get some of the QA and uh, the QA cards, but it's not a box. It's sort of like cards directly from uh, the print vendor. I'm going to dig up and see if I can find some cards here. Okay. So, and actually, I believe this card was previewed uh, if, on Instagram and other social media platforms. Yeah. Um, this, let's see if you guys can see that, Electra card. Oh, this yeah. is original art oh, from Bill Sinek. That looks, that looks wow. amazing. Okay, that looks real. That this is some I mean, that just... doing Electra, just crazy. But we also um, did a cover variant set of all one hundred of the original art cards, and this is a low series card, original art by Sinkevich. Yeah. This is the same art, but oh, put wow. on the cover of Daredevil one sixty eight, the debut of Electra, which TJ ch um, chose this issue. In fact, I believe he took great care on all 100 of these cards, these cover variants, um, to choose covers where the call-out features the character and it kind of just works. But what a cool, to me, when I saw this, I'm like, I love this card. I Yeah. I love yeah, it. It's just exactly what I amazing. want. Amazing. Or you could go with Daredevil 169. <laughs> say, okay, well, what if it wasn't the Miller cover? Oh, Amanda's going to be happy it, with that. Wow. You know. These are pretty cool. What if you did Silver Surfer 3 with Mephisto and did actually Mephisto on the cover of Surfer 3? Oh. Wow. Awesome. I love the corner box on those, too. Oh. Yeah, cool. or, or this is a reinterpretation of Sienkiewicz's Moon Knight 1 cover, art by Tom Fleming. Pull it back just slightly. There we go. There go. Lovely. Oh. Wow. That just looks this so is the rainbow better. version of it. You know, or Hulk 181. Whoopsie daisy. I'm throwing oh. stuff all over the place. Getting a little excited here, guys. Sorry. Hulk 181. Wolverine. Oh, my goodness. Who's the odds oh. on that? That is uh, Vinzel Tabanez. Yes. Vinzel Tabanez did this one. Um, and it just goes on and on. First, uh, This is the first Gwen Stacy. Or first go, uh, Spider Ghost. Dave, uh, first Spider. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, that's when, that that really that's awesome. That really works. That's that's great. Yeah, and, very, and yeah. seeing Sorry, it Columbo on the chrome, are. seeing it on the chromium on the the that looks that yeah. You know what's cool with these chromium cards? We have if you look at the electric card, look at there's line art surrounding the character. I don't know if you can kind of mm. see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it's got it, there. You go on her oh, leg. Wow. You can kind yes. of capture it a little bit. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's. Okay. Yeah, in, in fact, even on the call out to Daredevil itself, it's got this great line work on it. There's great embossed. detail on these cards in real person. Yeah, like an embossing almost. Um, yeah, so the variant, tons of cover stuff cards, the variant cover cards, I, I got to say real quick, is one of my favorite inserts to work on for any product that we do. And a big part of it is I get to challenge myself on what cover am I using this time, especially if it's character that we've used before. Mm -hmm. And um, my my number one goal is always most of these characters don't have their own magazine. They don't have their own title. So what cover am I finding where their name shows up on the cover? And you'll notice for like 90% of those, almost everybody's name is on the cover. So that was wow. a lot of fun. Okay. So so how much time does that take you to research and, and go through to, to, to match that up? Because I mean... That sounds like a fun research project to me, but it, it you, you get lost in the weeds, I imagine. Years of managing a comic shop back in my formative years really helps with that because <laughs> I, um, I've pushed, I told you guys before, I've pushed Long Division out of my head, but, you know, key right. issues and all that will stay here forever. So yeah, um, it's nice, though, kind of being able to kind of dig a little bit deeper and find like, Oh, let's, you know, instead of using a Fantastic Four for Medusa, let's use the Amazing Spider-Man titles right on her name's right on the cover. It's, you know, great use of Spidey there and it kind of outside of the box. So okay, it's just cool. it's a lot of fun to do that. Awesome. That's, uh, nice. Wow. Um talk to me about some of the artists, because we've got some names on this set that we've not heard. Oh, you're talking about the original art for Carlos? The original art, yeah. There's some, there's some, there's some, there's some. Uh, I, I hesitate to use the word, but I'm going to say it, and I'm sure people will throw rocks at me. There's some rookies um, on on the set in terms of Marvel cards. Um, I mean, how do you go about uh, tra tracking these guys down? I mean, I'm, I, I know that's probably not your department directly, but you know, in terms of the talent management, but uh, 
Yeah, um, it, it, you are correct. It's not directly my department. That is, we have an art team that works directly on this. But certainly we um, wanted to get some of the bigger names in here for sure, uh, which is not the rookies. But you've got, how, how could we say here? We talked about like creators like Ron Lim, Mike Allred, and Bill Sienkiewicz all did original art for this set. Um, we also have Tom Fleming, Casey Parsons, Andre Meester, Kyle Cacao. These are incredibly popular mm. artists um, that have, have done significant work. Um, some of the names that are newer to me, like JP Targetti, it does in amazing stuff. JP yes. Targetti does, I don't know if I can find some of his cards. Um, he has been, he does these before. cards. Mm. Yeah, has it, hasn't it been a while though? Yeah, I think Flea Ultra X Men might have been the last one. Okay, so Possibly. that was you know, a good five, six years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he's incredibly unique. I'm super excited when I saw his art coming through. Um, really, the folks on the art team could probably speak uh, better to mm. um, you know stories behind the selections they made for the artists that did that worked on some of this stuff. For a future episode, you know? I think. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a Targetti, uh, MODOK. It's wow. very unique, very unique art. No, nobody looks. That's... I've never seen anyone do stuff like that. Oh, that's. Mm -hmm. I think that's the Tom Taggart, actually. Yeah. Well, that's Taggart. That's yeah, Taggart. That's, that's that's the right. sculptures. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what was coming to mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I gotta, I gotta tell you, as far as that goes, um, one of the artists on here that I, I absolutely love her work is Susie Vilchez. Mm -hmm. um all the stuff that she does um for different comic book publishers and then like horror um like horror recreation posters and all that her work is so different than it's so unlike any others so getting her with specific wow. characters that's was, one of her and, yep it's a slam dunk putting her that's with a helicopter like mm. um but it's a I great mean, night when... it's a spirit of vilches Oh, dude, yes. I mean, I love that movie, number one, so yeah. that's perfect. <laughs> but it, it's so cool when we get to do products like this and we get people who have worked on comics. When you get the Tom Taggarts and the Bill Sienkiewicz and the Mike Allreds and the Ron Lims and the, yeah. and the Todd Knox and all these people, when they all get to kind of bring that um, kind of legacy and equity that they've built on comics and bring it to our product, I think it only adds to what we do. Yeah, equity is a good word on that one, actually, because they've all got a fair amount of heft. I mean, you've got Dave Dorman in here. I mean, he's only on two Dude, cards. Right? Dave right. Dorman. Yeah. All right. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm just going to spotlight that. There's a, a, there's a carnage. Oh, pull it back right. slightly. Oh, Ooh. nice. Perfect. Wow. Wow. Love it. That's done. That that carnage was done by, oh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Rumza did this. Wow. Nice. And then there is, this is a Mysterio by uh, Gilberto Martimiano. Beautiful painterly, like almost like yes. um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Palumbo style. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see a cat's awesome. in that, that red. These yes. are the red border parallels. These are ratio yeah, yeah, red yeah. border parallels. Uh, and um, I, we could certainly, I'd love to kind of jump at some point in time into the configuration and the breakdown of what the box is experience well, is like. Go. Go, go, okay. go. All right, let's, yeah, let's go. Let's talk about that. So boxes. Um, okay. The way the product was built, there is uh, 10 cards in every pack. There's 10 packs. So it's a big fat pack. Those packs mm. are going to be heavy. Really cool because the chromium cards are heavy. Um, and there is 10 packs in every box. Okay. So you're going to get 100 cards out of a box. It'll be a big fat stack of chromium cards. Nice. Um, there are eight boxes in every inner shipper. An inner shipper looks basically like a sealed case of products, like a baby case. And there's two inner shippers within a master case. So if somebody doesn't want to um, splurge for the entire sealed case of product, it's incredibly inspect expensive, but you want the feeling of, of breaking a case, you can buy an eight box sealed inner shipper. Um, granted, still not cheap, but it'll give you the feel of a case break. It's pretty cool. Um, now, within every 10 card pack, we talked about the 200 card set. Um, you're going to get three cards from the 1 through 100 series. So you get three original art cards and you'll get three cards from the 101 through 200 series. So they're equally seated. Um, so you're going to basically get three original card, art cards and three library art cards. Okay. That means four of your 10 cards in every pack are chase cards. So the way that That's is nice. structured. Yeah, you're going to get one rainbow parallel. That could be from the one through 200 
from all 200 cards. You get one rainbow parallel. You'll get one of the cover variants, which are these, what we talked about. Um, so that's eight cards. You're going to get one ratioed color parallel, which is basically these. It can be a red, a red border, a yellow border, a blue border, purple border, or a black border. Those are the groups, the five different colors that combine uh, at varying seating ratios. I think black is the toughest. Red, I think red may be the easiest. Right. Um, and those probably range, let me see here. <sighs> Okay, so red is like one in every 3.2 packs. Yellow is one in four packs. Blue is one in five. Purple is one in seven. Black is one in 10 packs. Those all cumulatively come together to give you one colored base set parallel per pack. Okay, oh. and again, from the one through 200. So that's nine cards. And then your 10th card is go going to be essentially a scarce card. Now, I said that there is 10 packs in a box. Okay, so of those 10 packs, five of your 10 packs are going to be either uh, your, your chase card, that, that 10th card is either going to be a serial numbered card or an autograph card. 50% of the time wow. you're going to wow. get it. The other times that 10th card is going to be one of the themed inserts, the cover inserts, uh, like the iconic, I think it's called iconic covers. TJ, what are the names of the three chase cards in there? Oh, that is, I'm sorry, I have that right over here. It is the creator art. Is that the? No, creator? it's not that. It's oh, iconic, iconic covers. covers. Super it is iconic covers. Super and statistics platinum duos. And platinum duos. Okay, yes. so those are three standard insert sets. Um, you'll get three of those out of your 10 pack box. Okay, so three of your 10 packs will have one of those sort of standard insert cards. Okay. Uh, you'll get one rainbow parallel of those three parallels in a box as well. You'll get uh, essentially five numbered or auto cards. That's nine. And then the 10th card is, what is the 10th card? It's going to be, <laughs> no, it's a rainbow parallel of like the what if um, cover. Oh, okay. Those are one nice. per box, a rainbow version of those. The regular cover variant, what we're calling cover variants, they're kind of like the old what if um, covers. Those are one per pack to collect the 100 card set, but the rainbow version is one per box. Gotcha. And they're just so cards one through 100. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how it breaks down uh, for the box break. Nice. Nice. Are we there, I don't remember seeing anything on the checklist. Are there sketches in this product? There are, um, but they're incredibly scarce. There's only about 100 total sketch cards in the entire run. Wow. So they're going to wow. basically be extremely rare. Um, but we didn't, this product's not really a, about sketches. I mean, heck, it's a Chromium product. You can't really, we've tried sketching on Chromium before, but you got to use like Sharpies and it, it looks really kind of rudimentary. Mm. It doesn't really resonate or work very well. Um, so we said, okay, well, let's just do a, a smattering of them and we're going to do them with the best artists we can get to commit to do sketch cards. So we got artists like um, like Bill Sienkiewicz had a Thor sketch that we previewed uh, on our Instagram and, and in our social media platforms. And that's been out there sort of, but uh, I know people have kind of chatted about it a little bit yeah. on um, like the, uh, on the MCC uh, message boards. Um, we've also got sketches, I think from Ron Lim. Um, who else do we have sketches from? I've got them right here. Do you want me to yeah, tell go for you? It. It. Yeah, please do. Um, so we've got um, Susie Villachez is one of them. Um, Ron Lim, which is super exciting. Mike Allred, which, I mean, how Actually, Allred didn't, uh, we don't have sketches from Allred. Allred did oh, not. Oh, we don't? There's no okay. From Allred. No, we have autograph cards from Allred, but no sketches. Okay. Then the other one that I have here was Bob McLeod. I believe that is correct. That's correct. Bob McLeod, yeah, which... Casey Parsons, Miles Todd Wall. Todd Miles Wall. And Todd Nock, yeah. Yeah. And Ron Lim, yeah. So um, there, each of those um, folks did somewhere around 10 copies, 10 sketches per. So incredibly rare sketches. Nice. Um, so if you hit one, that's a great kind of surprise hit. But don't break this product looking for sketch cards. Just, you're going to drive yourself that's, crazy. That's good. That's a good word of um, advice for folks, because I think there will be people who probably may have pre-ordered on that basis. So, um, yes. Um, so tell me about the... So what we've we've touched on the parallels. 
tell me about the thinking between the, vo the about the volume of them because I counted up for for Black Cat who's in the high series and bear in mind I've not seen what art you're using on that yet but I counted including the printing plates I think 28 individual items uh, of Black Cat across all the parallels so just I mean that's probably the highest number I think I've seen Upper Deck do on any Marvel set so far um, it probably is um Collecting printing plates, um, Ian, I think uh, most of us know that's sort of like Don Quixote kind of running in, into windmills. Um, this guy, it's a, this guy. A path <laughs> madness. <laughs> now, I don't really expect people to go out and like get all four printing plates or all the one ones You can try, <laughs> but you know. I'll it's... have to show you one day how many four plate rainbows I've got anyway. <laughs> right. um, but yes, granted, this is quite a challenge. Many mm. of those 28 parallels you're going to be able to get for a, a few bucks a card. They're not going to break the bank. So, you know, don't jump off buildings thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have to spend $9,000 to get my Black Cat parallel. Granted, are the 25s and the 35s and the 33s tough? Yeah, they're going to be tough, sure. Mm. But there's got to be a balance to provide chase value in a product yeah. with low-numbered stuff. And we know, you know, nobody, nobody is forcing anyone to go get all 28 of them. Click what you like. If you, if you got a budget, don't worry about the number ones. Just collect the ratio ones. It won't cost you much at all. You can still go eight or 10 deep. It's fine with that. If you want to say, I know collectors are cut off. They won't collect anything scarce from 50. Uh, yeah, and they just, keep, they're happy with that. Yeah. Keep and if, it. and, and there's nothing wrong with like, it's going to be a long time till we do another one of these products. Like I just told you, this one took three years, you know, so you got time. So if you want to work on this, who says that hard tasks are a bad thing? Sometimes it's great to have long-term <laughs> goals. To me, I was thinking about this earlier this morning when we were, you know, think about coming on the show. You know, in life, there's that cliche that life's all about the journey, not the destination, yeah. right? And we're collecting. It's sort of like that, right? Because there's great pride in ownership. I get that. I've owned comic books and cards for 30, 40 years of my life. And, and I will take them to my grave, clutched around my, you know, uh, around my body. It's going to be a big um, cost. And there's great pride in ownership. But we yeah. all know that half the fun, at least half the fun, maybe more than half the fun of collecting is the pursuit. Is the chase. Right? Yeah. If you don't have things to chase, it gets kind of boring, you know? Um, so I don't think it's necessarily the world's worst thing that you got 28 black car cat cards to chase. Collect, again, collect what you like. If you, if, if you don't, if you're fed up with it, then don't do it. But there's nothing wrong to me to have a long-term chase on that. Well, no, I mean, by virtue of the fact that budgetary constraints and just the volume of, of products with black cat in i've got no choice but to play the long game with it but that's fine mm -hmm. you know i'm I'm still gradually piecing together uh marvel beginnings for example um, right. but i think i think a lot of the um <clears throat> there are there are probably quite a lot of collectors who are still in the um in the master set mentality of the 90s <laughs> um and they are gradually becoming kicking and screaming in some cases used to the, the reality of, of modern card publishing uh, yeah. which is you know pretty much choose your own adventure so if you try and get right, you got you got to pick and choose gonna be, yeah you're just going to be driving yourself absolutely nuts um but um so i think yeah, i think i think i think that's that's good advice for folks is just you know just, just go what you you can go for and don't try yeah, and, and, and even it, it goes it goes directly back to hey is 28 parallels too many? Many people may think it is. Um, but if you say, okay, we're only going to do it with five parallels, we're very conservative. Well, your box break is going to be really boring. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we could just do an all ratioed and say, okay, we'll do five ratioed parallels so that you'll have color and all that kind of stuff. But then people are going to say, well, I just spent X amount of dollars in this box and where are the big hits? You're going to be nothing of value in here. So there's always this constant push and pull between. Yeah. Can, yeah delivering cards of value in your boxes and your packs versus issuing too many cards to go chase. Yeah, you can simplify I, the checklist, but you're going to strip out the value. Yeah. Fair. I was going to say, I, I saw something somewhere said in every box, you're either going to get an autograph or a serial uh, number parallel to 50 or less. So would you rather and have that's correct. That is correct. Rather have that, or would you rather have, 28 cards to chase. I mean, yeah. I'd rather have the the box knowing you're going to get something because I've had boxes that I spent a lot of money on and didn't get anything. So, for sure, yeah, um, yeah, Wesley, that's a good point. And what's the harm? It, it, I mean, this product literally forces the community to interact with each other and trade mm. and trade. There's so many things like Ian, you're going to 
you, you know, and, and listen, you guys are black hat collectors. Y'all going to be like, well, hey, man, <laughs> trading's open. You know, I broke a box. Yeah. I'll, I need black hat. I got lots of things I need. So hope and, and let's face it. The funnest part of collecting is interacting with the community. So mm. hopefully, yes, this presents a daunting platform of interaction, but it certainly is a wide platform of interaction mm -hmm. that's going to, yeah. I hope, spur a lot of discussions and, and trading. And you know what? At the end of the day, fun, fun mm. collecting. Yeah. I mean, it'll have legs. It'll have legs. That's for sure. Do you think it'll Did make the people on uh, EPAC any nicer at all? Because they just... they're. <laughs> Sometimes a little ruthless. We keep Grant away from the EPAC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't goodness. speak to how people interact on the EPAC platform. Well, I was going to say, I think, I, I think they'd eat Grant alive um, <laughs> in the nicest possible way. Um, am I right in thinking there's going to be blasters for this? There are blasters of this. That is correct. Blasters are five cards a pack, four packs per blaster, uh, and they should be 20, 25 bucks a blaster somewhere okay. around there. Yeah, That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So there's a blaster yeah. skew. Uh, there's going to be a pack war skew on EPAC as well. I thought so. Ooh. Uh, and you know what's fun is uh, the back of the cards for, I feel bad for the people who are listening. Oh, we um, haven't seen this. So let me just spotlight. We Nobody's seen, seen the, the card backs. Yet. Let's this have is a another look. element of like, why did we spend three years working on this? Well, guys like TJ and the, the type team and 50 other people oh, that man. I could fail to mention have spent their blood, put their blood, sweat, and tears into this mm. to give you full bios on the back, vitals on the back. Like if you're ever curious to know that the, how much does Magneto weigh? He weighs 190 pounds. Who knew? Um, you know, we've and it's ideal <laughs> for pack wars because you have all these skill levels right in sort of the yeah, top yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, left perfect. corner of the card yeah, yeah. with all these various categories of fighting skills, energy production, durability, speed, strength, and intelligence rated from one through seven. That's ideal for pack wars. And it, you know what? It's just kind of old school fun. Like mm. all of us probably remember being kids and flipping over card backs, looking at statistics on the old uh, Impel Marvel Universe cards or old sports cards. Yeah. Um, we'd all probably spend hours pouring over this. This set has it in spades. Like how much do you think Hello weighs? <laughs> Who knows? TJ? Come on. You should know this off. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I am I allowed to get? Yeah, how much this? does hell away? <laughs> oh man, I'm going with. Uh, was it inapplicable? Uh, no, there is some of those, but no, hell away is 500 pounds. She might Whoa. be going on a diet. That but apparently, is all as <laughs> like uh, uh, apparently, I went through a look about. I, I got caught on like the weight of all these here, like villains and heroes, when I was going through the some of the Q8 cards we received. Apparently, all as guardians, like the lightest as guardians, 425 pounds. What? I think it was Sif. <laughs> who is that, Sif or Balder? Sif. I think it was Sif. Um, wow. But Look, who the knew only that they were brand, so expensive? The only one that I have heavy. memorized still to this day is uh, Spider Man. It's uh, is it weight one seventy five, height five ten, hair brown, eyes hazel. It, um, yeah, it's it just it's so fun that like, well, how much does Galactus weigh? Wait, uh, you could, you know, I'm not going to tell you, but on the back of the cards here, <laughs> you'll be able to figure it out. Um, so there's a lot of wow. time that went into these cards, fronts and backs. Everybody put a lot of, uh, a lot of love and a lot of care into, into this product. We, we, we tried to do everything to the best of our, our powers for this product. On the com oh, no, I was going to say, I love that Pack Wars is going to fat shame a lot of these characters. And also, Jason <laughs> left the podcast <laughs> at exactly the moment we talked about blasters, because blasters are Jason's, like, that they're, they're his sweet spot. You like a blaster. Okay. Right, Jason? There are blasters uh, in this product, which I, think, which I think is really cool that you'll be able to go to, you know, any big box retail around America or even Canada uh, and get Marvel Platinum. Which well, is way more fun than buying... You know, we can't hear you, Jason. Know. Jason's <laughs> muted. It doesn't say he's muted. Have you pulled your plug out? Yes, I was. No. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I love blasters. I've got a Barnes & Noble right by my uh, apartment that um, I always go to and look at for Marvel cards, and they look at me like I'm crazy. But well, the blasters right, well, you'll have a great opportunity day. to do more public crazy in, in the near future at <laughs> your local Barnes & Noble. The thing with is, the, you go uh, there in your pajamas because you're literally right next to it. That's why they look at you crazy. Yes, that's that's yeah. true too. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Jason, did you have a question before we, before we you, your mute incident? You were about you started to say something. Was it about blasters? No. 
No, he's gone. Um, no, okay. okay no. I, I want to talk about the um, the chase um, elements of the set. Okay. There are some chase sets in here. There are. Um, so talk to us about that now. The only one I, I've jotted down here, because it's the only one with Black Cat on, is the Super Statistics, which is difficult to say when you had a glass of wine with dinner. So uh, let's start there. Uh, TJ, do you want to speak to this? You probably built those, or at least definitely um, stamped those checklists. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, as far as the checklist, can you repeat that one more time, Ian? What, uh, what was Super that? statistics is one of the one of the chase yes. elements. So cool. yeah, cool. Give me a sec. I'm pulling that. One back it's a up. 25 card checklist. You know what's funny is of the QA cards we yeah. got, we did not get the inserts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So this one was a lot of fun. Uh, we based super statistics, excuse me, we based super statistics mm -hmm. on the statistics that are on the back of the cards, but we chose one statistic to represent each character. What would be like their most um, kind of obvious trait? So like Magneto, um, I went with energy projection, Daredevil, I went with fighting skills, Quicksilver speed, war machine durability, so on and so on. And it was a lot of fun to be able to put it together because it really was all about what attribute is the first thing that you think of for each character. And then um, some of them, I went with stuff that was a little bit more um, personality based. So like Kitty Pride, for example, I went with durability for her because of um, her growth as a character from Uncanny 129 all the way to today. And so much of her durability as a person comes from becoming essentially Wolverine sidekick. So I, I wanted to think in, in the more obvious sense, but then I also wanted to think in the less obvious sense. And I think that uh, anybody who looks through this is going to find the reasons that I chose each uh, trait for each character. It almost sounds like an emotion throwback. The emotion yeah. inserts. Yeah. And, and and I love that though. I, I, I like when people can pick up on, on that stuff. Um uh one of the things that's always uh cool, you know, do you know when you read a comic and you're able to figure out what the end is gonna be before you get there? There are people who think that that's a bad thing, but it's not. It shows that you're on the same page as the writer. It shows that you understand what these characters are to that writer. And I feel like it's the same thing for our uh, collectors with the products that we build. When we're all on the same page with one another as far as that creative end, that's nothing but a good thing. And that's what I'm trying to do with the inserts. For those who are questioning what the heck is emotion, I, are you talking about 1994-95 emotion, Skybox emotion? It's an old sports, an old run of sports card sets from some yeah. 30 years ago. You know, yeah. um, yeah, there were a couple, there were a couple really good good ones. Ego the Living Planet was intelligence. That was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. um, what's the weight on him? <laughs> <laughs> Planetary. Planetary, yeah. I know the feeling. I, I, oh, I will tell you for Blob for his. Um, uh, this one was a lot of fun for his statistic. I put hunger. <laughs> so did you just have fun with these statistics, or did you go back and peel through stuff? Did you go to oh, old I, cards? I research, I research everything. I I never you know never go to a, a gunfight with a knife. Nice. I, I always make sure that everything is solid. So, guys, in the measure of time, you want to jump over to Iconic Covers and um, uh, the Platinum Duos inserts? Yeah, Platinum Duos. TJ, yeah, the Iconic Covers is a 25-card set yep. of classic covers, Giant Size X-Men number one, Avengers 57, Journey into yep. Mystery 83, that kind of stuff. Those are seated one in every seven packs. The, uh, the Statistics insert we talked about, that is a 25-card set at one in 13 packs. So Statistics... Super Stats is about twice as tough as Iconic Covers. Wow. Um, TJ, any favorites amongst the I Iconic Covers that you want to speak oh. to? Oh, yeah, totally, man. Avengers 57. Uh, absolutely. Avengers 57 is in oh, there. Yeah. Um, uh, House of M, number one for a modern one, just because that Olivia Coipel cover is so iconic oh, at this point now. Secret Wars 8 in there. Yep. Got that in there. Amazing <laughs> Spidey 33, just because it's the penultimate Silver Age Spidey book. Yeah. Um, what else? We've Wolverine 66. Um, is that uh, Old Man Logan? Okay. Um, Lethal Protector number one. So it's just it's fun to see that we were able to kind of run through mm -hmm. decades because every cover is iconic to somebody, but then there's yeah. the ones that are head and shoulders above the others. Yeah. Oh, and then Platinum 91. 
The Jim Lee. What's one. that? You've got X Men One from ninety one. The Jim Lee cover. Of course. Oh, Best selling comic yeah. of all time. Well, no, I, I was scanning through the list and I just saw X Men One. I did the date didn't occur to me, and I was like, of, of course, you know, <laughs> who needs number, X-Men, issue of all number time. one from nineteen sixty. Whatever. Is it the full cover. gatefold cover, or because there was the X Men one? Ah, that's a point. Which I, one is it? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I assume it's the right hand side of the the, the standard cover. Yeah, it, it's okay. the Iceman Cyclops Wolverine. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, because there was yeah several. Yeah. One of these days, yeah. can I petition that you do do the full gatefold on some sort of achievement? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Oh. That's a cool. That's a, kind of neat. So yeah. then you got We're, platinum um, duos. Uh, you got platinum duos as well. Twenty-five card set, one in every thirteen pack. So the same seating ratio as the super statistics. Um, uh, clearly two subjects per card. Uh, yep. Combinations like Thor and Beta Ray Bill, Iron Man, War Machine, uh, Doctor Strange and Dormammu, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Thanos and Doom, um, Spider Man, Miles Morales, Daredevil, Kingpin. Uh, so a lot of classic Hulk, She Hulk. Yeah. You avoided you guys... the one that Wesley no. wants, Scarlet Spider, Howard the Duck. <laughs> I, so I was specific. Yeah. I was specific about that because um, getting Howard in anything that is kind of hard because we have to have a very specific look for him. But that was twofold because I wanted Ben Riley on here, and the Spider Man in that is Ben Riley. It's not Peter. But Ooh. if you guys remember last time, I told you that there's one character I make sure that makes it into every set that I do. Was it Howard the Duck? No, it's the Beast. The Beast, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And I got I him in, plat- in Platinum Duos for the greatest buddy comedy ever, man. Wonder Man, oh. right? Beast and Wonder Man, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> card number 25 of 25. Yep, that Perez one. Avengers, wow. man. It's yeah. the uh, Beast Wonder Man go out on the town issue. Oh. Sweet. Oh, by, by the way, TJ, great Beast selection on throwbacks. I love that oh. card. Yeah. Is that the Walt, si- the Walt Simonson? Yes. The X-Factor yeah. 33? Yeah. 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 That's oh, it. that rules. Thank you. Yeah, we just went deep into that on the episode that dropped last week with our review. <laughs> awesome. So. Yeah, yeah, and Jason had done his homework on that. Um, Platinum Duo. Can I mention his comic art? Yeah. I'm sorry, Ian. What were you saying? No, I was going to say Platinum Duos. I'm guessing that's comic art from library. Yeah, yeah. all the yes. all three of yeah, all three of those gotcha. inserts we just talked about are all comic book mm-hmm. art. There is, however, one additional insert we've not talked about, and that is the creator art variant. Okay, and those are one per case. Okay, <laughs> these are really really cool. These are cool, and I want to show you some stuff here. So, oh, yes. what I what I've got here is the standard Moon Knight card, art by Tom Fleming, beautiful card, mm-hmm. right? Okay, this is just your standard card. This, however, I've seen this is the variant, the one per case variant where we contracted Bill Sienkiewicz to do an original piece of art of Moon Knight. We tried to get the artists paired with ca- characters that they're famous for. Now you'll notice in the bottom of the card here, um, the bottom of the standard card just says Moon Knight. The bottom of the creator art variant, essentially a very rare short print variant wow, of it, okay. actually has a call out that says creator art variant on it. Yeah. Wow. Other examples would be Silver Surfer. That's the standard Silver Surfer. <laughs> this is the Mike Lim, or I'm sorry, Mike Allred creator art variant. Uh, that's wow. cool. Okay. That's okay. awesome. Now, if you look at the backs of the cards, you can see here also the checklist oh, wow. card numbers have a V on them. Yeah. And the the backs are entirely different. They are very different, aren't they? Right. There's no um there's no power levels, anything like that. But uh you can also see it says creator art variant on the back of the card, and it says mm-hmm. base on the back of the card on the bottom areas here. Mm-hmm. With all the parallels, we tried to make a great effort to show you guys, hey, if you have a red parallel like this. Like Rocket Raccoon, it'll say Red Rainbow right on the bottom mm-hmm. of the card. Thank you okay. for doing that. Well, thank you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's been thank you. Yeah, it's so yeah, one more the one more cool art variant. This is the standard Galactus, mm-hmm. and then Ron Lim's creator oh, art variant. Oh, do you look at that? Amazing. Yeah, this is. Happen to have the Todd Nock one with you? The uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, I completely missed it, he was on this. Is set. it Thor? Is Cyclops, he did. Oh, Cyclops, yeah, yeah. So I wanted uh, to shout that one out in particular 
because um, Todd Nock, you know, who's a friend to Upper Deck, you know, he's been working at Marvel for years. Mm. Um, Cyclops is his favorite X Men character, and he'll cosplay yeah. like casual cosplay at his table. So getting him to do a <laughs> character that he loves on a product like this is just a, another one of those things that I think is really cool about um, what we put into that. Oh, uh, by the way, there are hard signed uh, uh, versions of those creator art variants, so you can find this Galactus <laughs> card hard signed by Lim, or oh, you can find oh. this Silver Surfer card hard signed by Sinkevich, oh, as well yeah, as this yeah. one hard signed by Fleming. There's going to yes. be both. Wow. Okay. And those, so the creator art variants are one per case. Yes. Do those we are know, one per case. And there's do, 10 of them. There's 10 different ones. There's 10 different ones. Do we know roughly how, how what the odds are on the auto versions of those? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the autograph ones. I love it. Uh, yeah, I've got it here. I've got it here. Yes. They're going to be red rainbow no autos, 100, 480 hobby packs. Wow. Okay. Now, keep in mind, though, there's also, there are parallels. There's orange rainbow, blue rainbow uh, autos as well. Mm -hmm. um and those are numbered of 25 and 15 respectively okay you know what i i, I am mistaken those are going to be sticker autographs on the creator art variants uh, there are hard signs for the cards one to 100s but we didn't have time on the creator art variants to get those hard signs they just have to be stickers okay cool wow i mean just pulling one with or without auto sounds like yeah oh it's gonna yeah, be super yeah, fun gonna yeah. Be cool. yeah, yeah. yeah 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 like this i'm a huge gonna... fan of um old man logan uh by mcniven and you're going to have like a hard sign card of that. It's just going to be awesome. Oh, let me just oh, put a spot wow. like that. Keep it there. Oh, wow. Wow. So good. That's awesome. That's, uh, I also love that we put for the first time ever the specific comic that the arts featured from on cards 101 through 200. See, just Thank above you. the the character's name, it actually says Wolverine uh, number 69 on there. I don't know if you guys can read that clearly or not, yeah. but mm -hmm. all of the cards 101 through 200, we included. The reference to the book that the art hails from i love Again, that Again, that's brilliant a, a level a heightened uh, attention to detail that we wanted to try and show you that there's a lot of time love and care and thought that mm. went into this product mm. and on the sneeze. someone else talk for a minute on the uh and on the comic ones that the comic art 200 are you uh, mentioned the artist on the back too for the um on the signed version we do on the regular version we do not Okay. But uh, on curious. the checklist, you'll see if you look at the checklist we issued, that you look at the go to the red rainbow autos, you'll see, I believe, the creator name. Yeah. The, I'm sorry, the artist's name is all on there. So there yeah. is a, a reference, a public reference that you can circle back and say, okay, if I look at the red rainbow artist auto checklist, that will tell me who the artist or who at least the creator involved with that card was. Because mm -hmm. many times it may be a writer, like we have Chris Claremont. Uh, signing cards and you'll see like dark phoenix is john bernard but claremont wrote the issue so he'll be the uh right. the creator right. involved wow and the art variants so the art variants you've got uh how many of these have you got it looks like 10 of these there's 10 of them yeah, that's correct there's 10 of them yeah so they've got a rainbow a red rainbow a yellow rainbow a blue rainbow so there's very there's variants of those as well so that that's there actually is. quite that's cool correct. so it you know in, in theory, you know, pulling one of those, but actually then if you wanted to go after, I know, all of the thing cards, for example, that would actually be a really... It's a know, new thing card, it's yeah. A, yeah. It's a new thing card because the art's yeah. totally right. different. But I guess this sort of, this product, if you're going to go after those. This, sort of, this product sort of limits the multiverse, right? There's just these like just touch, little just burgeoning touch. baby universes that you can explore. <laughs> and like, oh my gosh, another layer of parallels to go drive myself, myself crazy with it. Yeah, no, you're right. Good. I, I can imagine. I'm just so I I, I kind of get it now because I'm imagining how excited people are going to be when they're doing breaks online. When one right. of those one of those creative areas, all sorts of crazy stuff will yeah. be popping. Yeah. So that's it also be looks like there are some cool stages some cool stuff with textures. Like some of the cards are textured a different way. And um, oh, that if I may, really I'm so Wesley. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Oh, and you're welcome. Also, there were some discussions about blasters. Blasters mm, have an yeah. exclusive ratioed parallel called Blue Surge. Mm. Let me see here. Blue Surge parallels are, where are those things? There I'm they scrolling. are. Okay. Every blaster pack, every blaster pack has a Blue Surge parallel. Wait until you see how pretty these things look. Oh, can... oh hello. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> well, they're nice. Let, let me pull wow. some of these out to give you an example of what Blue Surge parallels yes. look like. 
Okay. Wow. Oh, the blue yeah, surge like paramels yeah. have this almost oh, wow. uh, um, this it's pattern, this beautiful yeah. like strobe like effect. It's a moving pattern, uh, like a wave pattern in the chromium. And obviously, we tinted it a light blue as well. Um, so all 200 cards exist on this. This is a one per blaster pack exclusive. You can only get, sorry, the, fortunately, these cards are near indestructible. Um, chromium cards are impossible. By the way, did you know, I dare you to try and tear a chromium card. It's like tearing a phone book. They're impossible. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you, know, you can see like Palumbo's Dr. Doom and Blue Surge. This Blue Surge set's going to be, oh, that looks great I think blasters are going to be really great. popular because this set is doable. They're one per pack. Yeah. You could yeah, do this 200 card set and it's such a beautiful set. It's it's really the only pattern. Most of like this is what we would call as a pattern substrate because it's obviously yeah. got that wave pattern on it. The the ratioed parallels that we talked about earlier that combined to deliver one per hobby pack. Those look more like these reds. They, whoops, Daisy, I'm dropping stuff like crazy. They don't really have a pattern. They're beautiful and they've got that red border, right. but it doesn't have yeah, the yeah. pattern on it. The numbered cards in hobby have the patterns. So gotcha. once you got, start getting into serial numbered stuff, you'll see the patterns. The I believe the only ratioed card that we did a pattern version is the blue surge that you can get in blasters. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that, that's and I think that's sort of similar to kind of how beginnings you had your red um supernovas, which were pattern, and then your numbered ones started to have the pattern as well. Um it reminds me. Of yeah, that. yeah, Jason. Yeah, I think you're right with the reference to beginnings, but we did try and put some thought into the structuring of it. Like, hey, right. if you're breaking hobby and you're getting a numbered parallel versus a ratioed parallel, we right. wanted to add a little more oomph visually to the numbered card and another visual indicator uh, to show, hey, I've got something a little more rare, a little more special. In, yeah, I'm, uh, looking, I'm looking forward to those blasters. In the beginnings, uh, I thought there was a, a special numbered out of five purple card uh in the blasters was there anything like that in the uh in these platinum blasters? um i i think the only stuff that's unique to blasters are the blue surge um there may be it would take me a second to kind of dig through and see what else you can get in the blaster stuff i mean you can get some pretty good numbered stuff in blasters you can get like cosmics number to 25 seismic gold number to 10 uh, even Golden Treasures 101s, you can pull in blasters. They're in there. Yeah. I noticed um, with the uh, Allure, I got some really nice. You started doing the, the, well, the magentas out of the 23s. Yeah, that yeah, was really, thanks. that was nice to be able to get those. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, I think we went a different route here and, and made the exclusive a little more attainable uh, here with the one per pack rate um, thing. So, but there is, like like I said, there is some all skew. Um, Really low numbered stuff that goes into all of the skis, including blasters. No, oh, cool. that's awesome. cool. That's cool. What's the um? Now that you've had these, how long did ago did you receive the cards that you showed us this evening? How long have you had to sit and look at those? Uh, less than a week within less the past week. week. Okay. Um, but I did um, spend. <laughs> I closed my door, turned off my phone, and spent like three hours just like going through all of this stuff, and you know, oh, I got this huge. Look at the size of this binder. Oh my goodness, mate! Oh. Stuff here. Like, like, <laughs> oh my goodness, mate! Um, um, and it just, <laughs> what's kind what's, of fun to go through all this stuff? So here's the thing: having having lived and breathed this for three years, and I know TJ, you came into Upper Deck. I imagine this set, the wheels were already in motion on this set when you came yeah. into it. Um, what is the uh, element of the set that you've looked at and you've gone, "That's that's I'm, that's turned out bang on or better than I'd hoped." Ooh. Grant, do you want to feel that one first? You've been able to. Oh, yeah, sure. I can take cards more than I have. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, when I saw these cover variants, um, you know, these kind of what if cards. Yeah. And I started coming into the some of the covers that TJ ch um, chose because I'm like an old school comic guy. Mm. So for me to see like Spider-Man 4, which is the, the first Sandman, but see it reinterpreted. You know, know, with Tom Haggard's <laughs> art, <laughs> it's such a mind bender That's for awesome. me. Yeah. Comic That's guy. awesome. Like going through these was truly a joy. Or you know, X Men Fifty Eight, Neil Adams cover first Havoc to see. I think this is Miles Wall doing Havoc. Yeah, um, it's just so fun to see these covers recreated uh, with this dynamic art that we commissioned and you know helped 
you know, along with the artist, bring into the world for collectors. Yeah, so yeah. The, to me, the the uh, the cover variant, 100 card set, one per pack, very doable set. There are many ways to, to get easy wins in this product. Mm. You don't have to look at that 6,000 card checklist and go, I'm out. I hate it. It's too much. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, um, I, think about it. I, like mm -hmm. I would collect this set, a 100 yeah. or a rainbow version. People of this will, set would be yeah, for sure. I would totally put this set together, or the red Absolutely. set is beautiful because it's kind of like, like that's the color of Marvel brand. The color of Marvel branding is red. You know, so right. this set looks beautiful in red. There, there's a you know, the red set came out great. The blue surge one, I haven't even seen all of it because obviously we don't get any of the autographs or any of the numbered stuff. The QA sure. we have is just ratioed stuff. We'll get a set of it. So um, I'm excited to see what some of the golden treasures look like. And so what does the seismic gold look like? Those seismic golds of 10 are going to look banging, you know, and we have yeah. autograph versions of some of these that are just going to be amazing. So what are gold rainbow autos going to be looking like? One-on-one -on -one gold rainbow autos and orange rainbows of 35. I, I haven't even seen them. Can't wait. I got to echo Grant on the variant covers. Um uh, I was talking to him earlier today, and one of the things that I had said is it's a perfect marriage between what Upper Deck does and what Marvel Comics does. Mm -hmm. And every time I look at those, whenever um, I get to put those together, it, it really is all about um, celebrating why we are all, you know, kind of the cream of the crop of what we do. And then again, like I said, when you're getting to take you know, that cool uh, kind of Silver Age cover elements and putting them on modern artwork, it shows how timeless all of those um, title logos are and why all those um, uh, cover captions are still used to this day. Um, it, it just it just looks so cool. I mean, that Walt Simonson, uh, the Thor Beta Ray Bill we, card we did with Tom Taggart and, you know, the Thor title logo being destroyed. Oh. It's this card right here. Guys. Hold that, that yeah. It's basically, I, I believe it's Thor 337. 337. Cover that Simonson did the, the debut of Beta Ray Bill. Yeah. Uh, but that's with Taggart's art in there. It's that's, so and cool. This is a rainbow yeah. version. You know, so when we cool. get to see how the corner boxes have evolved over the years, with some of them being the same characters, it mm. just. There's something about it that I think is so much fun. And I feel like, again, what Grant said, it's attainable. Um, this is Storm uh, with Giant Size 1. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Yo, uh, yeah, that's... It's just, it's it's so it's so cool to see. I, I, I love all that stuff personally. Um, and like I said, anytime you get to see uh, a character... Oh, man. Cool. That's uh, Avengers 57 uh, with the vision floating above what looks like Manhattan or something like floating in clouds. Ooh. Do you have the Colossus one? Do you mind showing that one off real quick? I, but that's gonna be hard to find. But I'll, I'll try. Sorry. Why don't you with um, more tales of uh, comic book history while I look? Yeah. <laughs> um, the Colossus. The Colossus <laughs> one I went with because it was the first time he ever had um, a title logo for him as a character, and it's still the same title logo that Marvel uses to this day with him. It was the the trial of Colossus? It's the the Danger Room issue with him and. It was, again, it's so nice to be able to see stuff like that, make it onto our artwork. So I just, yeah, it, it's a there blast getting to find that stuff. Found it. There you okay. go. Okay, X-Men 122, I think. Oh, yeah. no, his name's at the bottom there, yeah. That's, cool. yeah. Wow. And, and These like are that, really fun a, cards. I mean, how could this not be a fun card? To say, you know, that's a great. Think art. about this. That's a title logo that was designed in 1980, and it's still modern. Like, how cool is that? So, mm -hmm. you know, Neil Adams actually was the one that designed this X Men call out and debuted yep. it in X Men 56. Mm hmm. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. cool. So, I, I feel it's... duty bound to ask if you've got card 161 of Black Cat somewhere there because I'm jonesing to see it. And oh, given today's uh, the, Wednesday, the... I haven't yet watched any breaks. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, let me see here if I can find them. Because, cat because Wesley was going to ask if I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I have my own self-serving mm -hmm. question too. There's, there's, <laughs> there's two Wolverines. Is one of them an actual X twenty three? TJ would have to speak <laughs> to that. Uh, give me a sec. Let me check my checklist and make sure that my 
Kung Fu is correct. Um, <laughs> so as far as the cover, as far as that goes, the uh, cover variant. Let's double check. Wow, this is this is a really exciting set. Uh, so my my Wolverine in here is Logan for sure. Uh huh. But um. I think Black Cat only has one card in the 200 card base set. Is that correct? Yeah, 161. Okay. Not that I've memorized it or anything, Grant. <laughs> no, not at all. Right. Not at all. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's from her first one of her Amazing earlier Spidey covers. 194. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I had think a it's question. An Al Milgram piece. Uh, Keith, do you want to go? Well, yeah, I had a question in regards to the artists. Yeah. Uh, how did that selection process go? Why do some people have you know one? Some people have five. Is that just based on what they were willing to do? Because the some OCD the... in me wants like three of the same artist and then the next three, the next three. You know, we've talked about this before. Nine cards and div divisions of three. But I'll take for anything from a good artist. artist. It's workload for some, like get being oh, Black Cat. There's Black Cat. There oh, yes. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. To even uh, get a guy like Bill mm -hmm. Sienkiewicz to Thank do you, you know, two, three cards Thank you. is a lot for for the amount of work that he's still doing in comics today. Mm -hmm. So I think it really comes down to um, what, what is their bandwidth that they can um, bring to the product. But uh, again, like, like we said earlier, hey. like the fact that we were able to get like, you know, five Mike Allred's is so yeah. rad. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Like some of the people that did a lot of work, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, how did they lock that up? Yeah. So I, I think that that's really cool too. Yeah, it, it is certainly, um, I, we don't work on the art team, so we can't give you, you know, the word from directly from the source yeah. on this, but the intent is to try and you, you get your most prominent artists, try and lock them down and, you know, try and go get some Kevitz. Well, how many will you do, Bill? You know, and if he says I can do five, you're like, thank you, I will take it. Um, and you just continue going down the line. I think there's, I believe there are discussions between the art team and the artists themselves as to if certain characters they want to try and do. Uh, I believe there is some flexibility and, and discussion, no guarantees on that. And again, I, not my area. Um, but as to how all of them came to be, I, I don't know the backstory to how all all that list was um, put together. In terms of the, um, in terms, so that's in terms of the artists, but in terms of the characters, did you know what characters that you wanted in the set or did the artist have some input into that? Because I'm, I'm looking at this this list and, you know, you've got all the big hits, but you've got some deep cuts in there in the original art. You've got Blaster. Um, deep okay. cuts is a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, Blaster being a perfect example Super of Scroll that. Super being in there. Uh, there's I one. love Fantastic Four villains. Yeah, there's uh, one I've not seen in here. For this was also the first product in a long time um, that we could actually feature Fantastic Four characters. Yes. Um, yeah. You started to see a smattering of it in uh, some of our more recent releases, but keep in mind this was developed three years ago. Yeah. And yeah. they gave us the green light to do it. So yeah, we're gonna lean into some Fantastic Four stuff, including Blastar and Super Scroll alongside Galactus, Silver Surfer, and, yeah. and Doom. A, a perfect uh, a perfect way of mindset with um, checklists for original art versus checklists from publishing artwork. Um, I always think about what character do I want to see get interpreted. I don't care who the artist is, and a perfect uh, a perfect character for that is Brother Voodoo, because mm -hmm. whoever gets assigned Brother Voodoo, it is going to be the coolest looking thing. You know, um, we talked about Susie Vilches before. She's known for all of her spooky work. She does one of the coolest wasps I've ever seen. So it, it's that kind of thing where some of the artists, they end up choosing characters that maybe are a little outside of their comfort zone. But I think that's what makes them better artists mm -hmm. is working outside that comfort zone, too. I mean, you've got. I, mean, I can't remember the last time. Uh, Crossbones. I don't think he's been in anything. I yet. found Brother yeah. Voodoo since 2018. There's look, the Brother look Voodoo. Look cool oh, Brother Voodoo on. looks. Let me spotlight that. Hang on. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. Right? That's cool. No matter who draws him, he just looks cool. That is nice. Wowzers. Okay. Yeah. Oh. This is going to be, be fun yeah. putting some of these together, yeah. I think. And and it was cool seeing Dave Dorman on the checklist because I, I haven't seen him in a set in a while. Um and he's a he's a classic. So 
Yeah, I think like anybody who grew up reading Leo Star Wars been. books, right? Actually, right. Dave Dorman, right. uh, Dave Dorman is the Doctor Doom art variant. Dave Palumbo does the standard Doctor Doom right. in the one to one hundred base set. This is the Dave Dorman rare pace it. Uh, oh, oh, get that? Yeah, make that big. Yes. Thank you, Ooh, dude. <laughs> yeah, with um. the. Uh, yeah, the the state animal from oh, Florida. No. Oh, they had the riding the alligators. Yeah, we saw yeah. that one. That's right. That's, that that is really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, that is cool. Wow, that is cool. Um, I have to say, I was um, I was looking at the um, because the Dave Dorman covers. I remember the the um, Star Wars Dark Empire. So course. cool. So uh, cool. And then they did those metallic impressions cards of those of those covers and then they did a limited edition frame of all those metallic cards in a frame with his signature on them and i managed to pick one up last year for 30 bucks it's brilliant it's lovely anyway i can't believe i went off tangent like that because mm. you've probably got your next meeting to go to um <laughs> i've got about 10 minutes you've got about 10 minutes can can i can i very quickly i know we're, we're here to talk about platinum but it would be remiss of me if i didn't ask for an update if you're able to give it on when Masterpieces 2022 might be dropping on EPAC, because I think we thought oh. it might be February and then it's just clearly been and gone now. Um, if you don't know, that's absolutely fine. But I thought I'd ask just in case you knew it off the top of your head. Yeah, no, I'm excited to see it go on to EPAC as well, but I, I do not know. I would assume nope, hopefully in the next few months. Hopefully, hopefully soon. And is there anything, anything really exciting coming up? that you can just tell us about either for the first time or you can tell us that you're excited to come and talk about when you can talk about it more or I'm just I'm just trying to see how much juice I can squeeze out of Grant. He's looking for a morsel. <laughs> give him a little morsel. Yeah, just, just give yeah, him some, uh, a little taste. A little taste. <laughs> I, uh, boy, you caught me by surprise a little bit there. Oh, come on, Grant. Yeah, well, I'll, always, I'll always ask you. I'll always ask you. <laughs> I mean, there, there is, yeah, there's, I'm always... I'm terrible because I'm excited about all of this stuff coming up. I mean, flares coming up. That's going to be amazing. Ooh, yes. um, you know, there's some, there's some really cool uh, insert and chase cards in there uh, to go after. Um, we've got some um, cinematic stuff coming out soon with Dr. Strange and uh, the multiverse of madness. Um, I've seen some amazing imagery of uh, dual sign cards with inscriptions of Liz Olson and Benedict Cumberbatch. First time signer in Rachel mm. McAdams. Uh, that's going to be a big new name. She's never signed for us before. Uh, uh, I think Xochitl Gomez uh, autographs are also in there alongside some other characters as well. Nice. Uh, and I think that's going to be followed up by Thor Love and Thunder. Um, and we are, uh, that's of course going to have Chris Hemsworth autographs. But uh, to me, the most prominent name uh, in the signers in Thor Love and Thunder is going to be Natalie Portman. Uh, we have Natalie Portman autographs in this product, and uh, we're really excited about that. That you know, for us in, in the collecting world, it's it's hard to bring much bigger names, uh, especially in the MC universe, of an actress that you think is going to resonate in our in collecting circles. And Portman, uh, obviously playing Mighty Thor uh, in, in the film Thor: Four Love and Thunder, um, that's going to be pretty exciting too. Mm, good, good, all right. Um... Any last questions from the assembled masses there? Wesley, Jason, Keith? Uh, uh, not a question, just a suggestion if you ever revisit the product. Chromium covers were very popular back in the day. I'm thinking of like the Gen X covers. That would have been a cool insert to throw in there. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh. Yeah. An original unused. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, TJ, you're going to have to send me a picture of that yeah. later. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wowzers. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm digging. I'm looking forward to putting together just a regular set of the iconic covers because I, you know, I do like comic covers recreated on cards. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's 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 a nice element for me. I really like collecting those. So, yeah, I'll yeah. be going in for those definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I guess my wish list would be like hard sign Sinkevich Moon Knight creator variant or something like that. Right. The McNiven autographs for yeah. old Ben Logan. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking, yeah, it'd be nice, but I'm gonna, <laughs> if I pull one of those, I'll be very, very happy, obviously. But I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna try and not get too excited, and then be like, oh. <laughs> if I don't get my Sinkevich autographs, listen, I'll be happy with Al, Al Milgram and any of those black hats. 
So oh, for sure. There will be Al Milgram autograph. For, uh, it, yeah, yeah. I think it's Milgram's autograph on the Black Cat. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, thought I, I thought it was Marv Wolfman. I think no, it's oh, Wolfman. maybe Wolfman. It's Wolfman. Then Wolfman must have... Um, Al Milgram's on the spot. Ah, right. Okay. And you had seen right. him on there, but I couldn't remember which was which. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm I, really uh, for this. I was gonna say I got I got lucky and took a couple of the um, Wolverine cards to um, Comic Con last year in New York and uh, got McNiven to sign a couple of them and Ooh. I don't know I he's he he's just a super nice guy I, last mm -hmm. couple times I've been to the cons to talk to him it's it's easy to be a fan of his. Um, a lot of the publishing products that I'm uh, working on I'm always trying to find ways to get uh, his work in there between. Civil War between New Avengers, Wolverine, uh, Spider Man, Brand New Day. Um, he has such a very, uh, a very kind of perfect look for what Marvel was in the mid to late two thousands, and it's become this timeless sort of uh, yeah. art style. Yeah. Um, it's not trapped in the moment, but it's it's evocative of what Marvel was doing. So it's nice being able to get his work uh, into publishing sets. Nice, yeah, nice, cool. All right, listen. Grant, uh, we're going to let you go. Um, swinging from vine to vine today, from meeting to podcast to possibly another podcast. Who knows? Um, thank you. Appreciate your time, TJ. Appreciate your time, Grant. Thank you for coming and talking about this. Stuff. Thank you guys so much Man. for taking the time to uh, talk with us today. Oh, no, no, no. Well, listen, uh, let's, let's get the next one in the diary, Grant, because, you know, I, I could have you on every week, but you'd never get any work done. So, um, <laughs> good. Now, now, does one of you fine gentlemen want to want to lead us out with, that, with our rallying battle cry, if you can remember? Oh, it. that's got to be TJ. No, 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 oh, no, no. TJ. You did, the, I, you did Christopher Walken last time, so well, I want to see what Oh, it's TJ terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> um, all right. So, all right. Hang on. It's getting into character. All right. So, Okay. What am I? Uh, what am I doing again? I don't want to mess this up because I messed it up last. Enjoy time. collecting, dear. Enjoy collecting. Okay. All right. Okay. You ready? I'm TJ Shevlin. Enjoy collecting. <laughs> you really took a run up to that. That was my you freeze really frame. That. that was my freeze frame. <laughs> Wonderful. I might actually put that on the um, podcast visuals. Oh, no. I'm going to cut that out. That's the cover. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's if the I cover. don't make fun yeah. of myself, yeah. I do no platinum images. That's just enough, the man. cover.